Toshika Island infill strikes. They should Hopefully. infill strike it, destroy it, and then you load it into rebirth, right? <laughs> okay. Well, they That's should. Uh, they the should. Keeps going. <laughs> but like infill strikes on Vondel could be cool too. Destroying just Think a of... random block of buildings or something. Yeah. Or like level the museum. Yeah, they could do the so much with this too. idea. Activision devs do not play their own game. 3,000 devs can't figure out how to add a reconnect feature to a AAA title, I guess. I don't know. Because Infinity Ward doesn't tell their consumers anything. Maybe that'll take some of the sweats away from uh, Shoot House. You can cope about that, for sure. Thanks for tweeting, at least. Thanks for doing more than Infinity Ward has done. They just keep tweeting about the fucking the soccer bundles in the store. Things that are bad. We've, oh. got, we've got a couple words. Why don't you kick it off, Tanner? <laughs> you gotta... This is going to be a, a longer section than the first part you guys heard. Change it, obviously, of course. We are live, boys and girls. Welcome to the Drop Shot Call of Duty podcast episode number 414. Also, my name is Casey, also known as Razanon. Today, I am joined by Tanner for an exciting broadcast this afternoon yeah i think it's gonna be pretty good i think so it's gonna be a little I exciting so. cast little yeah broadcast an exciting little cast and today what that exciting cast is gonna be on of course is rebirth island season three so if you listen to the last episode you will know this uh we went through the season three blog post which had a ton of info on season three coming up obviously but we basically skipped over everything related to rebirth island because there was a lot of info to talk about and we already had done like two and a half hours rebirth. which we knew was going to happen so we basically just saved all the rebirth stuff for today which is what we will be doing um there is a lot and we wanted to have dedicate its own episode to it because, first of all, Rebirth's coming back, and that's very exciting, and people like that a lot. So that's number one. It warrants special attention for that reason. But also, most of what changed with Warzone generally, or will change with Season 3, is specifically the existence of Rebirth Island. So you can kind of also think about this episode as the season three war zone analog to last episodes, season three, everything but war zone um, edition. So Warzone. that is what we will be doing today. Yeah. Um, before we get into it, I don't really think we have any announcements to speak of. Do we? No season three releases Wednesday morning. Good luck out there. 9am. Make sure to play it. Have fun. Yep. Uh, no. Yeah. No. Okay. It. Just, uh, again, as a PSA, if you guys want that camo, you're running out of time. Make sure you get it. Get down to the wire, huh? The Rotten Inferno, yeah. It's getting down to the wire. Get I finished wire. all my stuff yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Played played on uh, KBAM. Oh, man, it was nice. Was it? I missed it. Did you? Yeah, I missed it. Uh, did all the, you know, whatever. Tickled the challenges. keys. Tickled the keys, yeah. Got some advanced UAVs in multiplayer. Oh, really? While doing challenges. You're in the I protected got one. bracket? I didn't get a couple. I got exactly one. Protected I was bracket. doing pretty well, though. Oh, yeah. I got I got a number of chopper gunners. Let's try the but, new perks. Um, try quick fix? Uh, Quick Fix isn't in the game because season oh, three hasn't launched, buddy. Season three hasn't launched yet. Yeah, that's true. So I want to make fun of fix. you a lot, but I had the exact same thought also. I was yeah. like, oh, dude, I need to unlock Quick Fix. I went yeah. to the armory, and then I realized, like, oh, wait, the update hasn't yeah. happened yet. Yeah, multiplayer sucks. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, anyway. Oh, good job. Uh, all right. So, now, let's get into this, sucker. Uh, so... We are going to go back to the blog post we had opened, um, again, last episode. And now we're going to go into detail on all the stuff we skipped last ep. Rebirth Island. So Rebirth is returning at the launch of Season 3. 
the island feels incredibly familiar, something they say. All the POIs are instantly recognizable, blah, blah, blah. So that was something we kind of alluded to um, last episode, is that unlike Fortune's Keep, this is not like a massively different uh, map than the one we originally had. In fact, it's almost identical with a couple small exceptions. Part of the reason that there are some exceptions is because we can swim now and we used to not be able to. Yeah. So they've made some map changes on the kind of periphery of the island to account for the fact that swimming is now possible. And that isn't a big deal, especially because unlike Vondel, um, for example, or Mazra, there's no water anywhere except literally around the edge of the island. Um, there's no waterways going through, to my knowledge. Well, if there are, they don't go in very deep into the map. But they're not going to be anywhere. Water won't be nearly as prevalent as, again, the, it is like on Vondel, which is good. So that map change, not very significant. <clears throat> and then there might be a couple other things that have changed inside some of the buildings, but not to any great degree. And again, nowhere near as crazy as the map changes Fortune's Keep got, which is good because Rebirth was a good map before. And uh, if they had changed it a lot, they might have made it much worse like they did with Fortune's Keep yeah. 2.0. So um, with that said, though, there are a couple other changes besides the water changes. Um, but that's coming with like kind of a new mechanic. And we're going to get into that. And that's actually a good thing, but we'll talk more about it when we get there. So here we are. Return to Rebirth, POI Intel. Where are you? I Happy am, Rebirth um, Day. Welcome back to Rebirth Island. Yeah, and then the and subsection then right after, Return okay, to Rebirth. It's an okay, it's right there. Got it. Cool. So I don't know how much we want to talk about each POI uh, since, again, they're not different. Um, But I guess we'll... We're going to kind of, we'll go through them all, but we're going to do it faster than we would normally go through a POI overview, since this isn't a new map. Um, so yeah, swimming and water combat, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they talk about a lot of the stuff. So first thing here is bioweapons. So yeah, this is, let me actually keep this in another tab. It also shows in that little image there where it is on the map. I, uh... Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Anyway, okay. So, it's yeah. It's the north, basically the furthest north point on the map. Yeah, the northmost Bio point weapons. of the islands. Uh, this was... I like this building. It's coming back. And it looks exactly the same as I remember it. I mean, the garage door, the staircase, uh, the inside looks the same. I mean, I don't... I wouldn't remember it's, what the inside It's quite a bit like different exactly inside, anyway. but it's it's just facelift. So they did a a video, uh Beanox did a little three minute video on Rebirth. And basically like what they talked about is when Rebirth came out in Warzone last time, it was based in Cold War, because it came out with Black Ops Cold War. So now, right. because this is a modern warfare game, basically they've tried to recreate everything to make it feel modern and you know, a little bit different and that's why some of the things have changed like like there was the nova 6 um factory on the island too so it's like now that's changed because nova 6 isn't a thing in the modern warfare series again i know nothing about this lore but this is what they were saying in the right. video so you can tell this top right image especially that looks it's basically like the same layout but it looks real cute inside real bright vibrant colors the floor is like super bright um, mm -hmm. but the structure of the main Looks building, modern. the outside staircase, the inside staircase, it's probably a ladder on the back. Oh, you can see right there. That is a horizontal zip too. It looks like on the top right of the image, the, the, oh, the, the top right. left image, the top right. Yeah. So there's a little zip coming off that. And oh. that's going to be prevalent Good here a lot. There are a lot of horizontal zips. Like every POI seems like it has them. Um, that's a good observation. Yeah, well, much of this structure, let's see if they say anything else interesting here. Uh, modernized laboratory. The same cannot be said for the atrocious basement showers and the remains of office floor. 
in the building. Yeah, oh, so that's cute. The right word. So they've kind of like modernized one floor, and then the other floors are basically like unused, and they're just in awful shape. I like that. Oh, and it even says right here, for a quick escape, take the zip line over to chemical engineering. Yeah. That yeah. the horizontal zip lines could actually make this game, this map feel a lot different. Maybe not in the best way if people can just zip everywhere instead of actually fighting their way through. Realistically, probably won't be a big difference or big issue. But that's something to keep an eye on if those become real commonly used. You're not gonna you're not gonna have the same type of gunfights you used to have if people could just zip to certain areas instead of run through certain areas and then get in a fight between POIs. So I think that's sort of true, but um if you're like on the roof of chemical engineering and you're in a team fight against a team on the roof of bioweapons before there were horizontal zips, you wouldn't really be able to like push over there without getting picked. Now that there are horizontal zip zips, like in that case, for example, I think that's still true. It would be way too dangerous to take. So I don't think it's going to be that, that different in terms of, how gunfights end up playing out. I think it's just going to be more quality of life for when, if you're not in a gunfight and you want to go to chemical engineering from bio, for example, instead of having to like run over there, you can just zip there instead. Yeah. And like, you know, if it was safe to run, it's going to be safe to zip. It wasn't, if it wasn't safe to run before it's probably, it's certainly almost not going to be safe to zip now. So I actually think it's just like a quality of life change in this case, but you're right. There could be some like really nasty horizontal zips that are, you know, um, you have like a lot of hard cover around you. So they're easy to take in a way that you couldn't traverse before they existed. We'll point those out if we find them, but yeah, yeah. What you said about the interior, yes, yeah, is, is use the word facelift. I think that's uh, that's a good description because it's like the where the desk was before. There's like still a desk there now, and it's still the same um, size, but it looks different now. Yeah. Basically, mm -hmm. that's what I'm getting from this. Yeah, and that's all good. So yeah, there's bio weapons. Uh, next POI here is industry. So this was formerly known as decontamination zone, I think. I don't know what it was called before, but it's like south of bioweapons. It's the building southmost. If you run along like the East Coast, you would see it. Uh, once again, looks pretty much the same the as it used to. The outside looks the same. Yeah, there's another zip there that looks like that may go all the way up to prison, actually. Yeah, and there's another zip going down. Wild. So that's what I'm saying. There are a lot of them. There are a whole yeah. lot of them. So this POI alone has at least two horizontal zips. Can't tell on the backside. Doesn't look like it. But the roof of this building is the same. You can jump down through like the skylights there. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's all the same. Inside, again, they basically the inside. same. Yeah, oh, wait, there, yeah it's, it's just a lot longer than the first section. Inside looks totally different, but again, basically the same layout. Uh, it's been cleaned right. up considerably, they say. Ooh, a polished white floor. Wow. The visibility looks way better than it used to. Impressively enhanced visibility when checking oh, the dark corners and crate stacks within. Yeah. Yep. Uh, then, yeah, there's that little side room that leads to chemical engineering that was always there. And then it kind of talks about how there is the... Uh, the helipad next to it that's all the same I'm trying to see if that zip goes all the way up to prison i don't know if it says but it sure looks like it does it does or it look just that goes up way. to the uh the prison yard the little wall around the prison yard yeah that's probably more likely right i think that's way too good if it goes directly to prison roof because that would be one zip that i think could change gunfights like if you're shooting at people or like sniping them from here on the roof of prison let's say you crack some guy Normally what they would do is like go prone and start plating before you would just have to like, okay, wait or run up there. But now you could just like get a crack and then zip straight on top of them. If you can do that, that would actually change how gunfights play. So yeah. yeah, maybe not good. Maybe not bad either. I don't know. Maybe that zip doesn't even go to the roof though. Uh, I guess we will see, but yeah, not much to say there. Um, <clears throat> 
Let's see. Don't miss the side room accessible from both floors that leads to a tunnel cutting under the helipad to the front of chemical engineering. I think that's new. Nope. You see that little... No, that was always there. Was it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, it goes right, underneath then. and then it comes out right by chemical right there. Yeah. That was always okay. there. It's on the inside of the industry building. It's on the side closest to bioweapons. That corner, basically. You go down a little staircase. Yeah, that was always there. Okay. Oh, I remember. Yeah. I, we like Wouldn't never use went down it a there. whole lot because it's usually kind yeah. of like a trap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so next POI is chemical engineering. This is close to bioweapons, but on the east side more. Um, this looks, again, same as it used to in terms it, of like this It says one of the stuff. few POIs to receive a complete retrofit. Uh, painted smokestacks on the roof. Uh, this is where now there, this is one of the areas where water is going to come into play. So basically you can jump right. down on the water there and take a zip up and then go through these two big pipes and get mm. into the POI itself there. Yes. There are numerous entry points. Investigate the zip line and ascenders before you enter the main L-shaped factory floor. Yeah, I'm trying to see where the zip is on here. So, so far I'm just seeing the zip that goes from chemical over to bioweapons lab, the first one we looked at in the image. The roof yeah, of this I'm building not looks the same. This water zip. But it's the ascender. I believe it's, it's there. It's there, yeah. I think there's one in each pipe there. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So having zip lines by the water is good. Um, I like that design choice. Um I think actually, yeah, by the water, that is quite a bit different. I don't think those like pipes or that building they're connected to were there at all. I think it was just like a walkway and it wasn't as sloped. Um, correct. I don't think that building was there at all. I think you're right. Yeah. Or that so made no, 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 no. Play a little different on that I'm side. pretty sure that was there. It was just flat concrete. And I think at times during rebirth, there was a buy station there and then it was just nothing. It was just like an open, it was almost like a helipad type thing, but it wasn't, it was just a sl big slab of concrete right there. So yeah, that yeah. is now you can get inside the building that way through pipes. Okay. Yeah. So this is going to play differently than it used to for that reason then. Cause yeah, I do think I remember that buy there as well. Yeah. Um, and now it's like not flat where it used to be. So mm. that'll be different. It'll be like worse to be on the coast, basically on the, on that side of the building than it was before, essentially. Um, yeah. I so. just can't really see people using the outside water much, which is good on this map. Cause like yeah. fortunes keep, you can land on the beach basically and then you're like down low and you have to take ascenders up but there's loot down there but on rebirth the way the loot is and how there's no reason to really go to the edge i don't think even like those zip lines coming out of out of the water will come into play much at all so like thankfully i don't think people will even use the water a, a whole lot only like i i guess if you're landing at like the ship poi or the other one right along the water here just to like a quick escape route but even then I don't know. I, I think since people are so used to playing this map a certain way, the water's not suddenly just going to ruin it because it exists, you know? That's what I think. But yeah, some of the other building that's part of Chemical, um, this was kind of like a, a warehouse with two floors, three floors, I believe. Um, that's been changed inside. It actually kind of looks like there's just more inside than there used to be. Maybe not. It's kind of just a big open room with pillars, actually. This is always a fun little area to fight. Yeah. But yeah. Again, facelift. It looks like it's like a higher ceiling than it used to have. Maybe not, though. I don't know. I don't think so. All the yeah. same windows are there. Those were in this image here on the mm -hmm. right. Those yeah. uh, windows were real popular ones to sit in and snipe out of, shoot out of. This yeah. was a fairly easy building to hold late game. I, I remember that a lot. This was like a strong building to hold. Mm hmm. Yeah. But yeah it was. Just a little facelift in there. Yeah. So, so this one will be a little bit different. Um, so there you go. Moving on. Doc is the next one. This is on the West Coast, kind of right in the middle of the map. 
uh, right next to prison. And sort of, I would argue, next to industry as well. It kinda. is. This is right next to industry, yeah. Yeah. That's the industry um, building in the picture there. This, I would imagine, because it's a dock, you dock, you have docks on water, um, is going to be one of the POIs that's like fairly different than it used to be. Uh, I'm actually going to read what they write here. I mean, it looks the same here pretty much from the pictures. Sewage treatment, power room, and lookout. This POI stretches all along the northern shoreline of the map, uh, beginning with a sewage treatment plant connected to industry. Adjacent to that is power room four, jutting out on an elevated concrete structure. Resting catwalks connect these areas. There's both an open bunker door and a submerged pipe leading into a completely waterlogged bunker and likely a few secrets lost to the waves. So there's going to be like an underwater loot room with good loot. So there will be a rebreather like. around there somewhere and they'll probably let you go under there. Yeah, loot a room. So yeah. yeah, so that's different. It's got the underground area now. Yeah, it sounds like. So mm -hmm. it almost makes it sound like you can go from from there and then come up in industry or what did they say exactly? Um, they don't say beginning with the sewage treatment but. plant connected to industry. Okay, never mind. I was thinking there was another like a long pipe you can either swim through or run through and come up under industry. So that's good though. That isn't ruled out though. Yeah, that still might be the case. Yeah, uh, we don't really know, but yeah. That's not going to be a huge deal um, in terms of, like, gunfights. You're not going to be, like, team fighting underwater very often. Um, but just some more more loot at this POI than there used to be now. Um, and this was fairly popular as a drop spot, but you would land literally on the boat. You wouldn't land, like, in this area yeah. where the pipes are and stuff. So... If anything, it expands the map a little bit in terms of where you can drop for reasonable loot. Uh, there's like a new area that you can drop and loot that didn't exist before, which is going to make the map feel a little less chaotic um, early game if a team chooses to go here. So yeah. that could play some role but i don't think it's going to be super major this is this was always one of the more dead areas of the map so adding a little bunker there is probably a smart way to kind of spice things up make people land there because yeah this was i mean nobody went to this area at all and these little the, buildings were yeah. there and nobody went there nobody went there at all the only place at this entire poi people would go is the boat itself um, and then this middle area between like the sewage plant here and the boat, this big concrete round structure, we would fight there a lot because there was a buy station there in that little building. That was yes. a little hot area, but yeah, the sewage area. That's terrible. true. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And then they uh, talk about the boat, the wharf and freighter farther along the dockside, a large freighter is accessible for ex exploration. This was the case uh, last time as well. The deck ships. Uh, the deck of the ship sits in full view of the nearby gun emplacements. So watch for foes attacking from that direction. Yeah, this would always happen. People like at control, uh, or coming from control, pushing down to the boat. Uh, that looks the same as it used to in terms of the layout. This is a cool area. Um, and yeah, there you go. Yeah, this looks the same to me. Exactly. Yeah, pretty much. And that chopper is still there, which it was last time as well. Um, next to the freighter. So, with the chopper. Next is control oh, that one. Center. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Control center. This was our favorite POI, our favorite drop spot, anyway. Um, and it looks, yep, just like it used to. Um, even inside, it did not get a facelift like uh, a lot of these POIs did. Once a construction site, this piece of brutalist architecture, K, okay. yeah, it talks about it. Um, it sounds like actually nothing changed here. Like the yeah, it kind of exactly just looks like it was abandoned. Like the bottom yeah. right image there kind of looks like everything's kind of rusted and just worn out. But that's the exact same layout from that image. Yeah, everything looks the same there. I don't think this was even touched. And one thing I'm not noticing is any horizontal zips from control. Correct. Yeah. Or to control. 
There is. Which is kind of an L for us. Okay, look in the top left image, that zip there. So that's new. That is new. So You're right. So you can take a zip up there. I don't see one on anywhere else on the roof. Actually, I literally just see that one. So you got a little zip there now on the uh, the dock side. Yeah. That's like right next I'm to where the buy station was new. historically. It is new. Because I remember I the buy remember station was there. like at the bottom of that. Remember? The buy station was right there on that side of the building. Yeah. 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 And we used to like run inside and then go upstairs to the roof. We would never zip up. I mean, maybe they added that one. towards the end, like of Rebirth, when we weren't playing it anymore. But I don't oh, remember is that someone being there saying at all. it's new? Is it's Jake yeah. though, so it doesn't really mean much. It's he's Jake yeah. Yeah, They're, so I'm not really sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I remember so many times we would buy loadout. It was it like that for a long time, and then yeah. we would go in the stairs. Yeah, maybe towards the end of the the. The map they did out of zip, maybe. But anyways, uh, oh boy, here we go, prison. Next one is prison, yeah. Wow. So, the prison. Looks, again, from the outside, uh, quite similar at first glance here. The gondola's still there. I don't know if I see any new zips. Actually, by the way, did we talk about there. how the gondola works or maybe it'll talk about it here? Let me see. Is so it be a button system. Again? So the gondola you can use as a zip line, too. So it does the oh. gondola part up and down, but you can also attach a zip line to it. And so, so you can go up it. So like in the trailer, a team is taking the gondola up and somebody hits the zip below them, goes up and then jumps out into their gondola and starts attacking oh, wow. them that way. So there's a new so way. So that's up. gonna make holding. That's gonna make that roof a lot worse, actually. Prison's like gonna be very game. difficult to hold now. I think yeah. it would be. Yeah, exactly. Because before, yeah, holding that ang uh the gondola, because people could get in the gondola and come up before, but they couldn't come up like quickly, and you'd see them coming. There's a giant gondola. Yeah. But now you n won't necessarily. Um, that will make holding the roof a lot harder for sure. Obviously, late game, it won't be harder to hold, um, depending on where Circle is, because then you only have to watch, like, one spot or whatever. But, like, mid game and early game, you're going to be, there are a lot of ways to get to that roof, uh, and you're not going to be able to, like, check them all at all times. So, which is probably a good thing, because the prison roof was extremely good before. So, I'm not, like, opposed to that. I think that's fine because it's such a big roof too. like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not like a death sentence being up there. You just got to be careful. So, uh, and then a couple screenshots of inside all the prison cells and stuff. This looks identical. The cells looks identical. Yeah. Uh, the showers looks the same. Um, the front area looks the same where there's the guard desk. <clears throat> Let's see what they say about it. If they say anything changed. Uh, doesn't look like it. Last image here, prison, the water tower. Um, that looks pretty much the same too. There's still like the scaffolding on the north side of prison as well that they added at some point. So you can get your way, get all the way to the roof from there. There are like 15 different ways to get onto the roof of this building. So, yeah, in the, um, in the last collection of screenshots for prison, the top left screenshot on the right side where there's all that dirt in those trucks and those tents. I don't remember all of that cover before in that area. I don't remember I the, some the, of those the, trucks the or tent tents on new. the bottom. I remember the other two. Those were definitely always there. I don't remember the one on the bottom, but I feel like it probably was there again. A lot of this stuff was added later by the time we kind of stopped playing it. So we didn't experience that a whole lot. Yeah. Like when I think of rebirth, I think of the concrete prison yard. I don't think of this, but this was the last iteration of rebirth. This is what they're continuing with. So okay. that, that may have been there, but I don't remember that really. Yeah. I don't remember it either. I feel Which like they is... wouldn't just add one tent there. So it probably was already there. I don't remember trucks either though. I don't know. Yeah. And I, whether it's different or not, uh, I like that the, those exist because there was a time where that was all very open. I, I, I feel like, or I remember. And, um, 
you did not want to be there. But now it's like you have some cover at least from people in yeah, prison. Yeah, I actually shooting remember shooting out of that window or shooting from the roof. I actually like the older area of prison, honestly, when it was just the concrete. I I didn't really care for it much when they added all of this. I thought it played better without it. But interesting. You can see this. I mean, yeah, you'd rather not be there if you were in the prison. That's a yeah. So yeah, maybe for that reason. But anyway, there you go. Um, Does the water tower have a zip up to it? It must, right? I don't see one. Oh, yeah, I see one. It's like the second floor. Yeah, okay. Uh, next, Harbor. Wow. Harbor. So this is on the um, east coast, south slash east, uh, from prison. Again, like kind of middle of the map. This was an area we did not go. It was not a good area to be. Yeah, you, would, you were so much lower. And exactly and for the exact same reason it's still not a good area to go because yeah look how like look how low your elevation is compared to prison Mm -hmm. and like even bottom prison like you're underneath everyone yeah um i remember explicitly saying as much many times in the past this is not a good poi to be generally you're just beneath everyone um and there's not much going on here anyway and it looks like that is all still true. The only difference now is you can like jump into the water and try and swim away. But I mean, that doesn't make this like a good POI to be at. I don't think. Um, in terms of changes it's had, not much looks different here. But again, yeah, like Tanner said, we didn't go here very much, so... If there's something like small that's changed, I wouldn't remember it. But this structurally looks exactly how I remember. Yeah. So. Although this little, this last little screenshot. Um, here we go. Toward Engineering is a brick warehouse and a newly constructed power station marked 6. While the warehouse is mainly a defensive location, the power station with black and orange exterior cladding... Okay, has smaller monitoring offices around a main turbine room, which descends into a water-filled concrete pipe you can swim through to reach multiple exit points. So that's new. Yeah, there's like a little underwater area. Uh, perfect for repositioning and flanking unsuspecting enemies. I don't think this is going to change uh, this POI very much at all, even less so than the water pipe uh, by docks because this is a far worse POI than dock. So I just don't expect this to be super relevant very often. Um, but it is good. They added that as like another little escape hatch, because again, this POI is in just such a bad spot. You kind of need it. So yeah. Yeah. Another little underwater area there. Uh, moving on next is headquarters and lighthouse. So yeah, this is like right below prison. This was grandma's um, house. What that yeah. building was. Yep. And then if you like cross the little walkway, you'd be at uh, the lighthouse building. And it looks, again, structurally pretty much the same as I remember yeah, it. Yeah, this one didn't even get a facelift. Yeah. At least the inside of uh, the lighthouse building did not. Right. Um, yeah, that looks the same. Grandma's looks the yeah. same, which yeah, is good because that's like, that's a little fan favorite area. So again, glad they didn't change something like that. That's kind of what I'm noticing. Actually, a lot of the changes they're making are areas that were more dead mm-hmm. and then they're kind of just not touching what want the real to see. hot areas Yeah, or the real favorite, but you know, maybe it just, maybe that wasn't even on purpose, but that's kind of how it seems so far. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, no, I, I don't really have anything else to add here. Um, Wait, what is this? Next. Hold on. Uh, it also Whoa. houses some interesting chambers below its main structure. That's the command center and garrison. Is it where like that bunker was at one point? Maybe they were talking about that, but that wasn't under the main structure. I don't know. But again, some other little secret they're yapping about there, I guess. I remember there was like an Easter egg under here. Well, like there was a on. vault, but the vault wasn't 
under the building, not the one I'm yeah. thinking of. It was just inside of one of the buildings. It was a door, making it sound like there's like a new, like a hidden underground area. Now I don't remember. I don't know. Factory, huh? Yeah. So next is factory. Um. Okay. It's the same. Same yeah. enough. This is just Southmore from Harbor. It's where that boat is. That again is like kind of a death trap. Um, yeah. There's like that building with way more elevation right next to you. Yeah. Um, but now with the water, jump off the boat if you're getting shot at. True. Just swim. Because there's so much true. cover too. Because you can't just get out of the water at any of these points because there is the concrete little retaining wall there. So you got to yeah. swim and probably find a ladder or go real far. So. Yeah. Those yeah, areas exactly. will be safer because of that now. Which is good because they need to be safer than they used to be because they were just so bad to be at. Like if someone was in those buildings, you would get held super easily. Um, and then if they like got a pick, they could easily just parachute straight on top of you and yep. clean you up. So, yeah, this is another area we like never landed for that reason. Um and the water, like Tanner said, will make it more survivable, which I think is a good thing. Um, so there you go. Uh, besides that, in the second set of screenshots for Factory, the first one uh -huh. in the top left, that little tower, that the was little there. watchtower. Yeah, that was there. That was there. Uh -huh. Okay. I don't remember that. Because nobody would go in it. Didn't make any sense to go in there. You're like lower <laughs> yeah, than the okay. roof. It was kind of just... Yeah, it seems like a weird. Just yeah, it seems it's so just out something of place. there. Yeah, it does actually. It's like right next to a dock. There's just a little watchtower. Yeah, why I, I would know, you build that weird. when you could just sit in the building and look out the window and have the same vantage point? That's weird. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, whatever. I guess that's the same. So yeah, moving on. Living quarters. This was a fun one. Great POI. I really liked fighting here. Control. Um, this of living is all quarters. the apartments. Yep. Um, south of uh, prison. So, yeah, apartments and buildings number building number nine. So, yeah, this looks pretty much the same. Also, I'm seeing the same. Don't see any like weird zips on it or anything. Looks all the same. Yeah. Yeah. Not seeing many horizontal zips. They like kind of blew their blew their proverbial load at the first two POIs. Like what? When's the last time we saw a horizontal zip? Yeah, I don't know. A lot of these. Minute. Yeah, yeah, they're not on this side of the map, are they? Yeah, uh -huh. it's kind of weird. There. Once we start playing it, I'm sure there are more that we missed. But almost weird. But maybe because I was like, you would think they would add more of them on this side of the map, actually, to like kind of traverse up the slope. But maybe they don't want to, because then that would make it too easy to rotate. I don't know. Yeah, it's a good question. That's a good question. But yeah. anyway, yeah, I'm not seeing any here. Um, besides that, looks Love very similar area. to how it used to. Really fun yeah, little super buildings fun. to fight in here. Yep. So what we would always do is go control, get loadout, and then rotate through the tents. Yep. Those are really fun gunfights into the apartments. Yeah. Good Whole times. people coming up from below. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do the tents look? Tents look the same. They do. Layout looks the same. The material they're using looks the same, yeah. So there you go. Uh, next is stronghold. This hold so on, is this, this is a new little bunker here? Whoa. Uh, also note the storage room near the pathway switchbacks and jetty accessible by the coastal road, as well as Any the strange the and chat? locked bunker door. How does that open? There we go. So there's some confirmation that we're gonna have bunkers that don't just open. You're gonna have to find a code, find a key, you know, something like that. Little Easter egg. So yeah, that's cute. I don't thumb. know if that was ever there in any version of anything. I don't recognize it, but that's cool. A little hidden bunker. Stronghold! <laughs> yes, the next one. This is another... This is like the southmost slash westmost um, POI. And yeah, this was the place you would just not go because rotating up is miserable from Stronghold. Yeah. Unless you got that chopper. Uh, but that I'm like not banking on that, um, especially with Warzone three choppers, super not banking on that still won't be landing here, but does it look different? Has anything changed? Uh, doesn't look 
so much. Not really. Looks like it got a little facelift, but yeah. like structurally, doesn't look like it changed very much. This POI is the best iteration. I don't remember what they were called before this, but this was the best version of that POI that we had on the map. Am I seeing the amphibious vehicle? Yeah. That makes jet it... Jet skis, too. They're jet skis. That, that makes it easier to rotate out of. There's also just a boat there in the vehicle. top left image, yeah. Mm -hmm. You got all those, yep. Yeah. I don't know, though. The amphibious vehicle is terrible. It's slow, and it has no cover. It does it, not have cover. If you're yeah. on land, you get gunned out of it easily. If you're in the water, you don't go fast and also get gunned out of it. So it's a terrible yeah. vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, this is like... I, I liked fighting here, but we just rarely would be here because it was so dumb to be here. So it's one of those kind of deals. And I think that's Question. kind of the same. Didn't Answer. we have balloons? Are there no balloons? Oh, that's a great question. There aren't balloons, are there? Because they put a balloon here at one point, and it made this POI a lot better, right? Because you could land there, balloon out. There are no redeploy balloons on the map now. Uh, I Yeah, are Didn't there? Didn't we have balloons? Well, I know there aren't here. We haven't seen any at all. I'm not crazy, right? We did have balloons at one point on Rebirth. I don't know. I actually don't know if we ever did. That's I'm a great pretty question. Sure we though. did. That's a great question. Because I, I mean, I oh, would yeah, much rather. Did. I, I would much rather have I that. Remember than the complaining zips. about how how little um, elevation they would give you. I remember yeah. explicitly. I talked about it. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Are there going to be balloons? They don't mention I one don't think ever. So. We we haven't even seen like a base whole... for any of them. Oh wait, well I guess they're not a base anymore like they used to be. Never mind. Yeah. Huh. So they're I you know what, dude? I bet you there will be balloons and they just didn't mention it. I, I don't think so. I think we there would will be. Well, you would see them in some sort of a screenshot. They'd be in the background of screenshots. That's how it always is. When we looked at screenshots well, of Urzikstan. Now. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we're don't getting know. them. I think that would be a massive letdown if we didn't. Especially because Fortune's Keep had them. So it'd be weird to have like ranked resurgence on the new map and there just are no balloons anymore. What are they called in this game? Drones? Redeploy drone, I think. Oh yeah, yeah I guess I should have It doesn't come that. up at all. Yeah, only that doesn't the, come up the either, new yeah. contract. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I would expect to see them. I, if they're not in at launch, we would see them soon after. But I think they will be here, and they're just not mentioning it. I wonder I if anyone know. else has brought that up, though. That's a very good question. Because it is, like, conspicuous, conspicuously missing that they've mentioned I it. I mean, they're not, not that important. It. It's basically just for this POI it made it this a landable POI. But I don't know. Maybe the game will play a lot different now, and it won't feel that way. They could be thinking if they add horizontal zips, that's enough. Well, yeah, they have zips everywhere. Yeah. So, so on that's so on the other side of the map, at least. Mm -hmm. It just speeds up the game more than anything, though. If you can land there, hit the zip, land like prison or something, just really speeds up the game. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. I guess that is that's a good observation, though. That is a good question. So we don't know. So anyway. Uh, there you go. Okay, so that's like the POI rundown. So now we're going to move on to some other things about Rebirth um, or things attached to Rebirth. There are a lot. So re Rebirth Resurgence and then Rebirth Resurgence Loaded we talked about yep. uh, last episode. So not going to go over those. Um, rebirth Lockdowns coming mid-season. We talked about that as well. Uh, and then this we did not talk about. New public event, Rebirth Infill Strikes. This will be coming mid-season. Okay, so this is very cool. <clears throat> and let's get into the details. Rebirth Island has numerous landmarks that you utilize in almost every game. But what if one of those locations was leveled by an airstrike just prior to infill? Oh, wow. Keep your wits about you. 
and learn new tactical movement across the rebel-filled scenery should an infill strike occur during a match. These explosive infill elements occur rarely and randomly, adding new gameplay experiences to that match. On certain drops, prepare to address your drop, uh, adjust your drop point and dynamic movement around a particular POI as these infill strikes destroy one of the following. Oh, wow. So a public event, so it doesn't happen every time, but it happens sometimes, where one POI just gets massively changed for only the length of that match. So mm. already, awesome idea. Super cool idea to keep things funky fresh. Because it's not going to be every POI that gets stricken. It's going to be one of the the ones we're going to talk about at random. And it's not gonna even going to happen every game either. So sometimes it'll be no infill strikes. Sometimes it's an infill strike on Lighthouse. Sometimes it's an infill strike on whatever, bioweapons. We'll get into that. And that's going to be really cool because it's going to feel like it's going to add some novelty. And But if it's like a bad change to the map, well, it only happens when that's the place that's infill striked. And it doesn't even happen every time anyway. Yeah. So this is like an awesome idea. And this is something we talked about like very early on in the podcast. We said we wished Verdansk every season would get like a map change, like a small map change, just to freshen things up. Uh, they never ended up doing that. But with this, it's like dynamic map changes sometimes. Yeah. That's going to keep things really fresh, I think, a lot. Hopefully they're not too rare. And this is a great, great, awesome idea that hadn't even occurred to me. And I really like the sound of it I, a lot. Yeah, I love this idea, too, because this is what this was one of the hot uh, discussions is in the trailer. It shows some of the clips were showing prison was like destroyed and everyone's like, what is going on? Yeah. And then, and then Raven made a tweet later and they're like, we see you guys talking about it. It's not going to happen every match. It's an infill strike. And then this blog post goes into it in depth yeah um they do say occur rarely however for them rarely is like 40 percent of the match because fog only fog is a very rare occurrence on vondel and it's there like 80 percent of the time so just keep that in mind they do say uh rarely but it's going to be most of the time you'll get an infill strike because they don't know what that word means but yeah, yeah this would be a horrendous idea if they destroyed a poi and left it there all the times so the way they're doing this is perfect i agree this is really cool yeah this is a great and idea. it's not just one area it's not like oh prisons destroyed again it's like you have three different areas of the map that could change yeah exactly so let's get into those specifically so first one lighthouse disintegration this is one of the possible places that gets stricken the lighthouse tower at headquarters topples into the forecourt in the corner of prison below creating rubble ramps to the adjacent building and prison. So one of them, yeah, knocks over the lighthouse, uh, uh -huh. which is kind of crazy. Um, and it also makes a giant hole in prison, uh, which is <sighs> yeah. going to dramatically, by the way, change that area of the map for that match. This isn't like a cosmetic change. This is like a, like a dramatic change deeply impactful map change for that area when this happens. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and then there are screenshots of it. There's rubble. I don't know, whatever. Uh, so another one prison roof collapse, an aerial bombardment creates a large plume of smoke. Okay. Don't like that. that. If yeah. it stays, uh, so, and it sounds like it will stay for the whole match because otherwise, why would you say it? and a massive fracture across the roof of prison with numerous small fires, super hate that, oh, this and was rubble Chambers piles idea. Okay. inside the now visible interior. Yeah, so this sense. is a bad infill strike. Yeah. It's Smoke a bad one, but it's fires. still interesting. Yeah it'll, yeah, it'll be somewhat interesting, I guess. Cool. Yeah. Still impactful, but yeah. You're going to have just 50 fewer frames that match. Uh, and way a lot less worse yeah. visibility. So, yeah, okay. Uh, and then the third one, water tower wreckage. 
missiles strike the tower's central platform and it crashes down into the plateau close to the helipad. A mass of mangled steel, the tank is ripped open in several places. I would say this one is the least impactful. For sure. Yep, I agree. Um, But still somewhat impactful. One thing this will do, for example, is make holding prison roof a lot easier. Because people will harass you all the time from that water tower. So if it's gone, then that makes, yeah, being on the prison roof a bit easier if you're on that side of the map. But besides that, does this change very much? Based on the screenshots, not really, honestly. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. That's fine. So, one thing that's cool about this, more than the these three particular infill strikes and how they will change the map when they happen, the best thing about this update and this public event is the idea of an infill strike in general is a really good idea. And hopefully we can expect uh, Season 3 Reloaded, they add three more infill strike possibilities. So now when the public event happens, one out of six map changes occurs instead of just one out of three. That would be, again, super cool. Pretty easy to do from a development standpoint since you already have the idea down. And we'll again keep the map really fresh without a permanent map change needing to happen. And that's really good. And then also, this idea might come to other maps. Infill strikes on Urzikstan, for example. Mm. Maybe I'm coping, but if they did that, how cool would that be? One out of five random locations can be infill striked on um, Urzikstan. That massively changes that map. Maybe the crane collapses by Trump mm. in downtown and falls on the building. And like that massively changes that like whole area. Yeah, I would like to see that. And that stops being the tallest building in that POI for that match. Yeah. How cool would that be? Like That'd that would dope. dramatically change that whole POI. Um, so I more than being excited for this particular instantiation of infill strikes. I'm excited they had the idea because it's a great idea and hopefully we can expect more. This is really cool. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to remind them that Urzikstan exists so they do that, but yeah, That's that is true. That's a great point, yeah. That's yeah, that, that this is probably yeah. something we could see going forward in general. So That's neat. Yeah. Yeah, because like there's, I mean, think of all the maps we have. Ashika Island infill strikes. They should hopefully. infill strike it, destroy it, and then you load into rebirth, right? Yeah. It, yeah. Okay. Well, they the should. Uh, they the should. Keeps going. They should infill strike, and an eldritch monster should come up from underneath castle and swallow the entire POI. Uh, that would make Got Ashika it. play a lot better, for example. Yeah. But like infill strikes on Vondel could be cool too. Like um, that would be a really interesting one. Destroying just a random of, block of buildings or something. Yeah. Or like level the museum. You know, like yeah, they could do the so much with this zoo. idea. Uh, well, yeah, there there, are, there's a lot they there. could do with this idea and this concept. And I love that they thought of it. It's a great idea. So W uh, Hamas and W Raven. <laughs> so okay. it's a joke. Okay. Um, anyways, obviously it's a joke. So let's see uh, new the Gulag thing we talked about. So another new public event. That is going to be on all Rebirth Resurgence modes. So this is not specific to Rebirth Island, but it will include Rebirth Island. But it will also include, like, Vondel Resurgence. Oh, no, it won't. Rebirth Resurgence. Yeah, yeah. I made the same mistake last time. So this is Rebirth only. Uh, this is happening mid-season, and it's a public event. It's called Heavy Armor. Announced during infill, if this public event is activated, it allows you some added protection enabling the equipping of an additional armor plate for the duration of the match. The extra plate slot is visible above your health bar where plate info is normally seen. This increases your operator's armor hit points from 150 to 200, meaning it increases your total hit points if you're fully plated from 300 to 350, meaning 
the time to kill for every gun is now different mm. and also meaning a gun that could be slow time to kill at 300 health relative to every other gun suddenly becomes way higher ranked on the TTK chart with 350 health. This is like a huge, massive um, change it, when it will happen. And I'm curious how often this is going to happen because I'd be really annoyed if the meta like AR, for example, is whatever the subverter. But then when this event happens, the subverter time to kill becomes terrible compared to other ARs. And then you just have to like hope this event doesn't happen or something. I'm not sure I love that, but I'm also not sure how relevant that would be. And again, I'm not sure how often this event would even occur. So yeah, uh, I'm not sure a couple about other this things. One. Yeah. The extra plate slot is applied no matter the plate carrier type you have equipped. So yeah, you can always have up to four plates. You begin the match with an additional plate equipped. Okay. Except for the tempered plate carrier, you have four filled plates at the start of a match. 200 health, 50 health per plate. If you have tempered, you have three plates with the third one partially filled at the start of a match. So a full tempered plate carrier still has 200 health, 66.7 health per plate. So tempered will behave basically the same. Um, you can be fully plated with three plates inserted instead of four. Um, so tempered will still be good. Um, and then that's pretty much it. So yeah, what are your thoughts on this? I like the idea, but I'm not sure I like the idea as a public event that randomly happens. Again, I want this to just feel like rebirth and I'm worried there are going to be way too many cheesy events happening. Uh, which makes it feel stupid, like how Fortunes Keep pubs felt this season, which is stupid and dumb and corny. Like the zombie stuff. Yes, yeah. just dumb, unnecessary stuff that people don't care for, and it doesn't add anything to the game, but just only... It adds clutter and nonsense. This feels like one of those things. If they want to do like an LTM of basically Iron Trials on Rebirth, That's exactly I what would I gonna say. much rather do that and be able to yeah. just queue for it. I'm not big on an infill event like this. Don't really love the idea, I'll be honest. I agree with you. I don't like it. Um, the weapon thing I was talking about is one reason. But another reason, too, is like if you play a lot and you have been using a particular gun, for example, for a while... You get very used to how many bullets you need to land and to the point where you will stop shooting at your last bullet to like take cover or plate or reload or move or whatever. And then like whatever, 20% of the time that all that muscle memory and intuition just goes out the window. And imagine you push a building with your SMG, you land eight bullets and you're like, okay, that's a down and you target switch to some other guy, but it's the guy's not down because this event happened. He has more health and then you just die because you're like not used to it or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I don't like it. I also wonder how are one shot snipers going to interact with this? I suspect oh, one shot snipers wow. are still going to one shot. So Would they? I think how they've done it is that headshots do like, 500 damage or something. I actually don't know, though. I could be well, wrong. Well, not according um, to true game data, but I guess he... How would he know if the dam if the health how cap much damage isn't that they do, high? Right. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wonder. I could honestly see that being a total oversight on their part and forgetting that they have one-shot snipers in their game and then just suddenly not one-shot during this infill event. Yeah, right, exactly, yeah. yeah. I don't know. If that does happen, they would rectify it pretty quickly. Yeah, I fair. agree, yeah. They would intend for snipers to still be able to one-shot, the ones that already can. Um, but that this event would make those snipers way stronger um, when, well, let's not say way stronger, but stronger when the event happens. Um but yeah, I agree with you. I it, it just like changing the time to kill is such a massive change that doing it randomly sometimes within a playlist 
is too weird for me. Mm -hmm. It's too much. I don't like it. it. You should just add iron trials so that I get used to the time to kill being longer. And then I'm like in that groove and I'm playing in this playlist. Yeah. That or if you play it and you really me. like it, then I'm going to be annoyed when I get a match without it. I'm going to exactly, be like, dude, I prefer too. this. I wish there was just a mode yeah. that had it. So maybe, um, honestly, maybe they're almost using this as a test to kind of gauge how people like it. And then maybe we will see a, a game mode like this later in the season. And one of the playlist updates, you know, one of the weeks where it's more health or something. Yeah. Yeah. Bronze yeah. trials. Overall, I'm a uh, metal trials. Yeah, we've said what we've said. So uh, next is a new mission contract spy drones. These go. will be an at launch uh, confirmation. The spy drones of unknown origin have been observed it's within China. the area of operations. It's it's the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah. <laughs> So there's a new contract, basically. You and your squad are to locate the drones, which appear to be gathering data at a specific destination. Okay. Head to the rendezvous point and destroy them. Expect additional rewards for neutralizing the swarm in rapid succession. And ensure you inspect the vicinity for dropped <gasps> armor plates, redeploy drones. Oh, so portable balloons. And possibly an advanced UAV. Okay. Oh, that's wow. random. Fair warning. Enemy operators in that area can also steal those rewards if they reach the drone zone. And I'm assuming the shoot zone. the drones before you uh, and they can get that loot instead. Yeah, I wonder, can they shoot the drones or can they just get the loot? I wonder. I feel like I really like this idea either way. Drones. I think this is cool. I like this. I think it's fine, but how often are people doing contracts on Rebirth? I just don't think it's going to be very relevant, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, and again, it's only on the one specific map, which is insane. Exactly, yeah. Like, this would be way better on Urzikstan, for sure. Well, like, at the very least, just add it to all the Resurgence maps. Put it on Vondel. Put it on Ashika. Put it on Fortune's Keep, I guess. Yeah, I hate how they're doing this. I hate how they add things to one specific map. Yeah, and especially, again, like on Rebirth, I just don't... I mean, I don't dislike this idea. I think it's fine. I think it's cool. But I think this would be way more interesting on Urzikstan in particular. Yeah. Yep. Because th th like, that's a map where I'm actually going to be doing contracts, potentially. Especially if I can get an advanced UAV out of it. That would probably be too strong at that point. But still... um. A contract that can drop portable balloons and some other like plates and ammo or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be cool. I could absolutely see me doing this contract because I want a portable balloon because that's a really good field upgrade, but you can't reliably obtain it. it you can't buy it at a buy station. It's just kind of random if you find one. Um, if there were a contract where it was guaranteed, kind of like satchels used to be guaranteed from scabs back in the day that would create some incentive to do it. But like on rebirth Island, I just don't see this being relevant at all. I, I don't know. Yeah. But it's not bad on rebirth. It's just like, yeah, add it to everything at least. So anyway, uh, moving on from there, there is also the champions quest on rebirth Island resurgence champions quest. So this is new, uh, for two reasons. It's another new contract on a different map. So it's different for that reason. But also, unlike the Vondel and Urzikstan new contracts we have now, this is a new contract in Resurgence. Because the Vondel one is only for Vondel BR. It's not for Vondel Resurgence. So this is going to be a different category of kind of new contract because it takes place in Resurgence. That is something we've never seen before. Uh, so here's what they... Oh, and this yeah. is only on Rebirth Island. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's super weird, yeah. The ultimate contract mission is confirmed to be active on Rebirth once a certain number of consecutive wins or a total number of wins are achieved. Bring a game plan and some competent cohorts with you while you wait for, locate, and defend three elements necessary to create an impressively explosive finale, K, and achieve complete domination, K. Expect a variety of rewards. So these are different rewards including an animated calling card, charm sticker, weapon camo, and operator skin for those elite enough 
to complete the quest. And then there is a, a screenshot of all the rewards, it looks like. There's an operator skin. It's a bright orange hazmat suit. Okay. Um, there is a an ugly weapon camo. Hideous. Like the worst one we've seen. That's not good. Yeah. Um, there's a bizarre looking weapon charm. I don't even know what it's supposed to be. Like the periodic table of elements was ripped off of Walter White's uh, little poster. Is that what in that's supposed to be? Class. In, like to the left of the gun? Bottom left of the gun? Yeah. PU. That's like. Yeah. Plutonium. That's like. That's yeah. a, if that's supposed to be the emblem or whatever, that's horrendous. I think that's the weapon charm. Mm, okay. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look good either. Uh, so all of the rewards are ugly. And there's also there are also no details on how exactly you do the contract. Like, And the reason I bring that up is because normally we would assume the three elements behave in the same way that they do on Urzikstan, and the way to complete the contract would be the same as it is on Urzikstan. However, Vondel has three different elements with three different effects. So like on Urzikstan, one of the elements disables vehicles. You can't drive. Uh, but on Vondel, that element is another name and it has another effect it does not disable vehicles which elements are we working with on rebirth are they going to be the three from urzikstan or the three from vondel or three new ones probably three new ones. we don't know i guess we're just um, not even getting a new champions quest uh rewards or anything for urzikstan i don't know they say nothing in the blog post that's about true. that either that's a good point i wonder if it's just the same rewards as last season yeah. And another question I have is let's say I get a win in BR. Does that count toward the new contract in resurgence? Great question. Let's yeah. Say if I get a win in resurgence, does that count as a win toward the Urzikstan new contract? Because that would be a lot easier. I'm thinking no. I'm thinking the wins are going to be separate. Because for Vondel, it's Vondel BR, like you said. So those share the same. But for this, those since, same, since yes. Resurgence and BR are separate stats inside of your player stats, um, I bet you need to do specific Resurgence wins. Yeah. Which and is that the way it only be. would grant you a Resurgence new contract. Yes. That is how it should be. And... I'm not going to go so far as to say that's how I expect it to be. I actually don't know, but I would, if I had to guess, I would assume that's how it's going to work, but that whether it's not, whether it is or not, that's how it should work. Yeah. That's for sure how it should work. Cause if you can just farm rebirth wins or any resurgence map wins and then go get a nuke in Urzikstan, that would be crazy. Uh -huh. So yeah. Yeah. You're actually, now that I think about it, you're probably right. It is probably resurgence only, which is good. So there you go. How hard would it be to get a do a new contract on Rebirth Island? I don't think resurgence. it would be that hard, to be honest. I think it'd be one of the easier, probably the easiest one to do. Because like if people are pushing you, the thing is everyone else on the map will also be pushing you. So all of those people are going to end up fighting each other. Yeah. I don't think it would be that hard. I think it'd be a lot easier than doing a big map nuke. But people would be able to land on top of you all the time with guns. And that would be happening way more than yeah. even in Battle Resurgence. Yeah. I don't know. So I don't know. I think it'd be It'd easier. be crazy. It'd be fun to go for, though. That's for sure true. Another thing about Rebirth, though, is there's a lot of hardcover everywhere. Like, part of the reason it's hard to do on Urzikstan is because they're doing the new contract. It kind of forces you, a lot of times, into just terrible spots, terrible positions that are like very open where you don't have that much cover. Um, no matter where a rebirth new contract would force you to go, there's probably hard cover pretty close to you. Like you can break line of sight a lot on that map. So like even to reason, cover it would be easier, uh, like cover it as it's at, like after you arm it, that seems like it'd be very easy on rebirth as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause you could get so close to it and be in cover while you do that. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 yeah, I think this will probably be easier. I think you're right. I think it'd be really fun to do, though. I think this would be the most fun one to do because it's such like a, yeah, a small map. So anyway, um, next is a new field upgrade that is going to be resurgence only at launch called Squad Rage. And there's a diagram 
here. So this is a lot. This is a lot of detail for a field upgrade. So already I don't like it. Locate an enhanced version of the Battle Rage field upgrade by looting or or buying it a buy. Oh, wow. You can buy this one. And then huff the mask, okay, to your tactical advantage. Once active, Squad Rage vaporizes any gas within the radius of effect surrounding the user and grants Battle Rage to both you and any teammates standing within that radius. Okay. So... Stave off the gas, resist the effects of enemy tacticals, and utilize the infinite tax sprint, increased health, and regeneration for the duration of the rage. How crazy would this be? Never mind. Uh, weigh these advantages with keeping your crew close enough for everyone to gain these possibly match-winning benefits. Okay. Incentivizing more stacking again. Terrible idea. Hate it. Exactly. Hate yeah. it. It's either going to be very annoying and people are going to utilize it or no one will ever care and use it. Both. I just, it, this is dumb. Yeah, this is stupid. I agree. There's absolutely no reason to add this to the game. I agree. The Extremely one thing corny. I like about this is that it is like a another PDS in that you can go into gas, hit this, and then get a buy off since it neutralizes the gas around you. That's kind of cool and interesting. But I would much rather they just add PDSs to Rebirth instead than this. Yeah. Super corny and weird. And I don't like it. I agree. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, utility Box is coming mid-season. So, without reading it, it looks like it's just a, combo a combo Muni and Armor Box in one. Yep. Yeah. Which is a great idea, and, and it's it only on Rebirth Island. Yeah. So it's rare ground loot, or again, you can buy it from a buy, which is nice. Um, and it's it's literally exactly what I said, yeah. It's an armor box and a muni box in one. Uh, so, yeah, why is this on Rebirth only? Why it's on like they're just removing every other map from the game, and it's only Rebirth for Season 3. They might as well just they're take Urzikstan They're probably going out. to do that. Yeah, They gotta save file space, so they're just gonna remove Urzikstan, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Cool idea. I Great like it. idea. I love it. Add it to more things. Add it to yeah. other maps besides the one map in your game. Right. Yeah, not much to say beyond that. So, uh, the kill streak new equipment called Foresight is coming mid-season to Rebirth only. <laughs> okay. Which, okay. Um, so, yeah, this is what we've seen before. It shows you future circles where they will be. All future circles. So you'll be able to see where the final circle will be. It's as if you did a recon contract 10 times. Um, so not much to say on that, but let's see how it's. Oh, obtained. you can buy it. Purchasable at a buy station. Yep. Okay. Wonder how much that's going to be. What is your guess? So it's rare loot or buyable at a buy station. Yeah. Um, how much will it cost? That's a great question. 20k I was thinking like 12 to 16 yeah interesting I feel like also, a lot of people would get it yeah probably but 12. also it's resurgent so it's not nearly as strong as it would be for battle royale because like the That's map's true. so small and it's resurgent so it's like you have to survive and fight to get to those final circles foresight in BR on big map you can get to the final circle and just like post up in a building and like wait there for a long time without fighting anybody. So it's much, much uh, less strong on this anyways. I agree with that said, I don't, I've never liked this existing. Like the thing, if it's anywhere between even 12 and 20,000, I don't even know if I'm ever buying it. I'd rather just buy UAVs. I don't mm -hmm. care where the circle's ending, you know, not for resurgence. I agree. So, yeah, I agree. It's okay to add, but I don't. I can't see myself personally using it much. I guess I, for ranked, yeah. if you can buy it in ranked, that would be pretty insane. Maybe that would be insane for sure in ranked. Yeah, I wonder if it'll be in there. That's a great question. I would hope not. Honestly, I I don't like it. Yeah, but anyway, whatever. 
We'll see. Um, and then this is coming mid-season for Rebirth only as well. Specialist. So it's a perk package now. Uh, it's even got the little... It's got the same like art as a perk package, but it has the specialist icon on it. It's kind of cool. So now that perk packages are lootable, this is just another lootable perk package, except it has all the perks on it. Um, so they write a lot of words. Let's see. It's only very rarely found at a redacted or in specific redacted, but its effectiveness can cannot be understated. So we don't know how it's going to be found or obtainable. Probably those bunkers they were alluding yeah, to will be one yep. way to get it. Um, and then, yeah, if you have it, you have every perk in the game at the same time. Um, so that's pretty crazy. You get 29 additional perks. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Instead of, what is it, four? <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty good. So, um, yeah, it's really strong. And you can't buy it at a buy station. At least they don't say you can, which is good. Um, Correct. And it's only very rarely found at redacted or in specific redacted. So I, again, I've said this as well. I don't like specialist at all, especially if it's just like a rare chance because then it's like, okay, well, this guy is specialist and I died because he had it. And he only has it because he like got lucky and looted it or whatever. Like that's super dumb. Um, I would like it better if it was specialist is guaranteed, but you have to go here and then open this door and then like drill through a safe and like people know you're drilling through it because then it would create a hot drop and that would be kind of cool. And then when you die to someone with it, at least they earned it. But it being rare and random, I L, especially for how strong it is. So you can also probably steal it since it's can, a perk yeah. package. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So if you kill someone with it, you could pick it up. That is cool. I think um, if you're going to add it. Um, but the other question is how strong would specialist B in this game strong it's always strong yeah but like certain times specialist has been better than others like well certain times most of the perks have been horrendous in the game this sounds I mean we have a lot of good perks right now yeah exactly. so I think it'd be very very mean. good you Double would get time irradiated OD. even though I probably don't run that you get a uh, uh, sleight of hand, even though I might not necessarily be running sleight that, which a lot of people near, don't right arm. now. Strong arm, yeah. Cold blooded, it's pretty good. Uh, quick fix, so if people are like running tempered, they would also have quick fix. It's very good. Resupply, actually pretty good. That's like a solid perk that I'm not going to pick myself, so that would be nice. Ghost, or high alert, or shrouded. Like a lot of those are pretty good and I'm not running all of them at the same time, obviously. Yeah. So I think specialist is particularly strong in this game. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really, really maybe the strongest iteration we're going to see, but again, uh, it is resurgent. Probably. So just less impactful in general. I agree. Um, like if this was in BR, it would go, it would be insanely good. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, only available for rebirth, of course. Yeah. So whatever. I wish they didn't give you bird's eye though. I hate bird's eye so much. God, I hate it. It's an annoying perk. Yeah. To Cause run. you lose the elevation. Yeah. Especially on rebirth. That's so bad to have. Bird's True. Eye. Actually, God, that would be awful. Dude, so you know what? I will point. never pick up. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'll never pick up specialist. specialist yeah. Cause I don't okay. want bird's eye. Yeah. So anyway, next section, updated movement, aquatic gameplay comes to rebirth. So this is at launch. Well, don't say updated um, movement blog post right you didn't update the movement you just added the water the swimming yeah the same. so they added water you can swim in it and they added jet skis and bros stuff. are trying to act they, like they added a new feature a new movement yeah. mechanic okay yeah so i don't know why Shut that needed to be in some section but yeah. whatever uh new feature biometric scanner at launch this is rebirth only 
Okay, I don't know what this is. Dotted around Rebirth's uh, upgraded comm facilities is a series of 10 biometric scanners, terminals that include full biometric scanning capabilities. Once per match where these scanners are active, you can approach the scanner and quickly check your stats. The scanner produces a key card based on your identity, placed directly into your backpack along with an XP reward. Okay. Inspect the key card and you'll see it contains your operator name, clan tag, and access level. Okay. So, so far, don't know what's going on. Key cards take up a slot in your backpack. They can be dropped or looted and they can unlock a special menu in any <sighs> Rebirth Island buy station for the duration of the remaining match. Okay. There are six different rarities of key card from bronze to Orion, which is the weapon camo that I have, by the way. So, okay. The percentage chance of receiving a specific rarity is redacted, but your chances improve if a squad mate is close by during a scan, incentivizing stacking. Why? Awesome. Or if you repeat the scanning process in the next few days? This is very weird. I don't I, know what the hell they're talking about now. I don't know what this means. Yeah. Oh, wait. The percentage chance of receiving a special rarity. Uh, it doesn't even make sense. Receiving a special rarity is redacted a like that. A specific ra rarity. But a specific rarity of what? The key cards, I guess? That's what I, yes. I don't understand. Okay, I have no yes. idea what they're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the, the percentage chance of getting a particular rarity is redacted. So you can increase the chances you get a higher tier key card by doing they don't tell you. But one of the other things you can do to increase the rarity of your key card or the chance that you get a high a good rarity is if a squad mate is close by during a scan or if you repeat the scanning process in the next few days. So this is all very weird, and I don't love what I'm hearing so far. But the key card, let's move on. Buy station access to in-match rewards. Bring your key card, or one you've looted from the corpse of a foe, to any Rebirth Island buy, and a special key card menu will be accessible based on the highest card you have in your possession, the highest rarity card. General examples of expected items from each key card menu are as follows with any equipment and perks selected from your favorite loadout. Wait, what? Just keep reading, because they're going to say you can get lethals or tacticals, and it'd be the ones that you have selected in your okay, loadout. Okay, got That's it. what they're saying. So at bra if you have a bronze key card and you put that in and a buy, you can get... Here are some examples. Random ammo, cash, armor plates... Lethals and tacticals. I don't get it. So okay, it's so free. You can get cash. Yeah. So you just insert the key card and you get free stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's not like things you can buy. It's just free stuff. Yeah. That's including cash. So you can hit it if you almost have enough for a UAV, mm -hmm. and then boom, you have enough for a UAV now. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, silver is all that plus a perk package. Gold plus a plate carrier or field upgrade. So that's already pretty interesting. That makes quick fix, for example, potentially a lot better because then you can expect to go to a buy station with your key card and buy a tempered plate carrier, for example. Pretty interesting. Or field upgrade. So now I'm confused. Oh, you just get a free field upgrade rather than purchasing it. Okay. So platinum is that stuff plus a kill streak. And at, at each tier, you're getting more and more money also, by the way. Um, so Platinum would also be, allow you to get a free kill streak. Okay. Polyatomic. Redacted free equipment selects at the buy station. Redacted weapon. Free equipment selects. What does that mean? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know what this means. But also a redacted weapon. Unless it's like a ray gun. I'd rather not. I'd rather have my yeah. own weapon. Yeah. Okay. So that's weird. Uh -huh. And then Orion is that stuff or additional redacted. Got it. Okay. 
So. Um, and then here's the next section before we start talking about it. Additional and permanent in-game rewards. There's growing evidence that returning to a biometric scanner on subsequent but non-consecutive visits. What constitutes consecutive? Okay. May unlock a variety of additional assets, including camouflage for your armaments. So you can get weapon camos by hitting these a lot, as well as communications deemed most secret. No further details have been authorized. So maybe some lore. A lot of questions here. A lot of questions. Almost here. nothing but questions. Yeah. Yeah. Buckets full of questions. This is one of those things that I'm incredibly confused by, but it'll make sense once it launches. So I almost have no thoughts on it. I don't know. I overall, I think I like the idea of especially because they're lootable. That makes this pretty cool. So you can like loot a rare key card from someone and then it gives you a strong advantage. But to get the benefit of that advantage, you have to go to a buy station, which is not something people are doing super often in resurgence. So maybe you, it puts you in a more dangerous spot than you'd otherwise go. Maybe makes those, uh, it incentivizes more engagements for that reason. Um, I like the out of match rewards for like hitting one repeatedly. Uh, that's kind that's cool. I always like rewards, obviously. Um, but I don't love, first of all, scanning while teammates are next to you, making the rarity likely to be better. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know why they're doing that. That's just annoying. Um, and yeah, other than that, it's just a lot of questions. Um, but overall, I don't hate the idea. This is one of those things that we're going to have to play the game and see. We're going to have to see what all this redacted stuff is, first of all. And then we're also going to see how it actually plays in game um, to determine so is the, whether it's good or not. Are they saying the, the key card will get more rare as the season goes on, too? Or is it the literally just match of you to hitting match? A scanner and getting a rare key card will increase as the season goes on if you've been hitting scanners to that point. Okay. Is what they're saying. Yeah. Yeah, because it says, or if you repeat the scanning process in the next few days. Okay. Yeah. Huh. I, I don't know. Again, it just sounds like we're adding in a whole lot of cheesy stuff, man. Just let me play Rebirth, you know? There's a lot of stuff being added in here. A lot of stuff. I don't know. Yeah. it's. I feel like could be overwhelming the amount of new cheesy mechanics that don't really matter, but just add clutter to the game. I think de it depends on what this redacted stuff is for these yeah. rare key cards. Because... Everything that is not redacted, it's actually fine. Like, I don't think it's that cheese, really. Like, you get a key card, and then you can get some free cash or plates at a buy. Like, I don't... I'm not sure that adds a bunch to the game, but it's not, like, gonna ruin the game, I don't think, necessarily, either. Uh, it's not like adding, you know, I don't know something cheesy that they've done in the past necessarily but i don't know what this redacted stuff is maybe this will be super cheesy um or if you can easily get like free kill streaks such that there are five precision airstrikes created out of thin air every single match that would be really bad too um because then we're just going to see a bunch of streak spam like we saw on old fortunes keep where there was billions of dollars and infinite numbers of kill streaks at every buy. That I could see being a negative here as well, because not only can you get a free kill streak, but you're also getting free cash so you can buy more kill streaks. So is there going to be streak spam because of these key cards? I think that's possible as well. So I'm really worried about that, and I'm really worried about what exactly these redacted things are. So I don't know. I think there's potential for this to be a good idea, but it doesn't sound like one so far, but I'm not sure. 
We'll have to see. Yeah. So anyway, uh, variable time of day is another new feature that will be coming mid season on rebirth only as season three progresses. The atmospheric conditions of rebirth may begin to vary with an increasing chance of variable changes to the weather. The visibility of your squad and enemy players is always of overriding importance. Okay. No, it's not. As this weather mainly serves as pleasing new ambiance to the backdrop you're fighting in. Rebirth Island's weather is almost always sunny with clear skies. And then they show us screenshots where that's not true. I know. That... For example, the first one. <laughs> yes. Got it. So, yeah, look at this image on the left and then reread. What does it say here? Uh, the visibility of your squad on enemy players is always the overriding importance. <laughs> it's ple yeah. serves as pleasing new ambience. And then they show that where it's just, I mean, the fog's way worse than the Sheikah, it looks like. Unless the screenshots yeah, make it terrible. appear a lot worse. Like the one on the right does just look like, well, it's a little hazier too, actually. A little bit, yeah. But that's like whatever. But the one on the left looks like it's way worse visibility. So yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about. So uh, they they go on. Occasionally there may be matches where the sky is brooding and overcast. And they underlined occasionally, by the way. I don't believe you because you said the same thing about Vondel Fog. Yep. And it's in every game. So I don't believe them. Uh, the sun is setting or light sea fog begins to roll in. So, by the way, not only is there one potential weather event that will worsen visibility, like Vondel, where it's either fog or no fog, there are two potentials. So, even if the chances are low, the chances are low for two different things that will make the weather worse, not just one thing that will make the visibility worse, rather. Because you could get either brooding and overcast, or roll the die again for light sea fog or not. So, not good. Uh, sometimes the change in weather lasts the entire match. Sometimes it may change partway through and the changes in conditions mean extra vigilance is recommended as unique items may spawn during these infrequent events. That's a cool, neat, interesting idea. What could that possibly be what different items could spawn based on the weather. Great question. Um, no idea. Don't know. Nothing makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Take advantage of every situation to win the game. So, yeah. I like that if there's, like, a weather event, the odds of, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what would make sense, actually. <laughs> I can't think of You're anything. Right. Huh. Yeah, that's a great question, actually. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah. Anyways. I wonder if there will be uh, flares, by the way, on Rebirth. Because remember when Vondel launched, there were no flares? Or no. Well, there weren't because the flares weren't added to the game. But then they added flares to like Vondel, but they weren't on a Sheikah. Remember that? Not really, but I believe you. Yeah, we talked about it. Um, they, I think it was when they launched Vondel. They added flares. They added the favorite supply box as loot yeah they had a and bunch of things that was map else. specific yes and then on ashika it was just like oh nothing changed yeah um, yeah, yeah i remember that so i wonder if what we're gonna have here because yeah, yeah like know. you brought up balloons there might not be balloons at launch will there be flares how common will they be we know there are going to be portable balloons because that's a contract reward for the new contract so that'll be in but yeah i'm curious so anyway, just a random thought. But yeah, don't I hate variable. Yeah, they say variable time of day, by the way. And then literally none of what they talked about has anything to do with the time of day. It's all just different weather. Yeah. And they're saying it can like happen in the middle of a match. So I'm like, OK, so it just randomly decides to start just turning. Time dusk traveling. I, yeah, I hate the, the weather stuff like this. Yeah, because I don't believe anything they say. It does kill visibility. So. Just make it sunny, make it bright. Like nobody's gonna complain if it's if rebirth is sunny and bright for a year. There's not a person that <laughs> yeah, you should exactly. ever take seriously that's going to say, Man, like rebirth would be a lot more fog. fun if it were overcast, had a little bit of fog. No. Just make yeah. it sunny and bright always. We don't need to do this. Exactly. At least this doesn't come till mid season so I can experience it before it being ruined. Yeah, that's a yeah. So we'll see how that plays, but it won't be good. 
another new feature, smart displays. These will be in at launch, available on Rebirth only. Bolted onto both exterior and interior walls across the island are over a dozen smart display panels offering ops, the latest in Coney propaganda. Oh, propaganda. Okay. The general weather forecast for Rebirth Island and more tactically where the largest heat zone is the congregation of players fighting during a match. That's cool. So you can see where the hot spot is like, all right, uh, the uh, heat zone is prison. So if you're like looking to get in gunfights, you know, to go prison or if you're yeah. looking to not get in gunfights because you're a pussy, that you was on Vondel. Prison. I guess, by the way, I don't really, I the vaguely remember that. And somebody in our live stream last time said it or in discord said it after. Yeah. But yeah, it's like these on, on Vondel, you never look at them because the map's huge. I had no clue where they even were. I thought half it was the time. just weather on Vondel. I, th I know. I think it showed some sort. It did something that showed you the threat level. Maybe it was just when you entered the POI. Maybe that's how this is going to be too. I don't, I don't know, but it definitely showed threat zones in some regard. But yeah, it's like I'm never going looking for one of these to see where the hot area is. I'll know by listening and looking, you know. Yeah, the map is pretty small, so it's not like super important. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of agree. But they they say more operators who've secured biometric scanner key cards may also be shown on these big screens. Okay, so it's kind of like a. Oh wait. It would be just their name, so it doesn't matter, actually. Never mind. As well as the first demon operator to hit 10, 15, or even 20 kills in a game. That's cool. So you know who to take down or avoid. So that's not going to be impactful gameplay-wise, but it is neat. Where it's like, if you're frying, you can look at one of these and your name will be on there. That's kind of cool. are going to be screenshotting themselves in front of that, yeah. And this is like Apex, like I talked about last um, episode, where it shows like the kill leader or whatever. This is a similar thing to that. So, yeah, not super game-changing, but it's a cute feature. Unsubstantiated rumors also indicate redacted <gasps> comms from an unknown entity have occasionally breached the, secu the oh, security wow. systems running these displays. Who do you think? What could that be? So, randomly, the, the screen will, like, get all staticky, and then there's going to be some monster beating oh, off on it or something. Yeah. That's what oh, I'm guessing. Shoot. Yeah. Wow. So, that's going to be, like, a lore thing. Okay. So whatever. Yeah, um... It's okay, cute. you know where this would be great? Urzikstan. I would love if yeah. there were like banners on the road, like the billboards, and it we're showed hot zones, where people right? Are. Yeah, and it showed the hottest zones because that would be great on the big map. But it's on Rebirth Island, and they're on twelve-inch monitors, and there are ten of them on the map. So good luck finding them, uh, and good luck looking at them for more than four hundred milliseconds before you get shot in the head. Uh, right. Yeah, again, cute little feature. Would love to have it on big map. A great feature. This is the third now uh, new thing that's Rebirth exclusive that is cool and would be much more useful on Urzik's Den. Yeah. Yeah. So. Very cool. Got it. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, did we skip this? Oh, no, we didn't. Yeah. This, this is the one we talked thing. about last yeah. time. Yeah. That might be it. Um, no, it's not. No, there's. The weapon trade stations are coming back mid-season oh, for Rebirth more. only. So, um, you guys might remember these on... These were, I think, also Rebirth exclusive last time we saw them, but... I think they were. Can, I only remember them being on Rebirth, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, this will be mid-season. Um, access this reinforced locker and trade an unwanted weapon for one of lesser quality and some extra loot. So one thing that was really good about these, for example, is if you get in a team fight uh, near one of these and you win or you kill like two of them or whatever, you can and to grief people, we would do this a lot. And it made me laugh. It made me giggle every time you would pick up their loadout guns and then go trade them in at these weapon trade stations so that you can get like a kill streak or some cash or some ammo uh, but more importantly, to just destroy their guns. So if you leave there and that team drops back on that for their loot, they won't be able to get their guns because it doesn't exist. Um, so, but yeah, you could also trade in like a green gun. So this is nice too for the abysmal weapon blueprints or gun setups that 
Call of Duty loves to give us as ground loot sometimes. So for example, if there's going to be a purple Mark II lever action Red Rider, I don't want to yeah. use that. Yeah. Right? But it's purple. So it's got a lot of attachments. It's got a lot of rarity. I'm turning that sucker in and then maybe I'll get like a UAV, a plate box, and like a green Ram 7. Well, I'd much rather have that. So boom, weapon trade. Yeah. So for that reason, it's cool too. Um, and then they talk about what you get. That's pretty much it. Yeah. I covered everything. Yeah, we yeah. know what they are. It's a weapon trade station. Oh, wait, 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 on wait. Hold on. On rare occasions, yeah. if you're incredibly lucky <gasps> and trade a formidable weapon, you can get a specialist Ooh. perk token as well. So you know where that would be very handy, actually, is they confirmed in that Beanox video too. You know how there were guns... There were rare guns with like five attachments laying random places, like at the top of yes. a lighthouse, there's a sniper. Um, right. If you pick one of those up and just immediately trade it in, maybe a decent yeah. chance to get specialists off of those little gun builds. And some cash and stuff yeah. too, yeah. Yep, that'd that's be, true. That'd be a cute little idea to get specialists. And again, other players' loadout guns also are going to be um, ultra weapon category. Or legendary five attachments so yeah pretty good on unsubstantiated intel launch on rebirth only it seems the island contains a great many secrets perhaps some completely undiscoverable i doubt it uh all of this is off the books and some redacted they wouldn't be telling us a multi step process can you imagine they coded in an undiscoverable secret they spent like 40 death hours Perhaps on it. Something completely undiscoverable. It's totally discoverable, by the yeah, way. It's, yeah, uh, it's yeah, obviously, funny. yeah. So dumb. Uh, so yeah, uh, a multitude of challenges not redacted, remaining untracked, redacted, but not related to the custom weapons available. Redacted. Additional, I hate when they say redacted, redacted, redacted this often, redacted, man. Redacted. Yeah, it makes whatever. it annoying to read. It's There's secrets. Of, there like, are bunkers and things. Yeah, yeah, there are secrets. You'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah, go watch Ink Slasher videos. He'll he'll leak these. So anyway, whatever. Uh mid season we're getting oh never mind. I already talked about that. That's where yeah. stand. And that is it for Rebirth Island. Oh wait, I don't think that is it actually. Well. Let me keep doing I think a it scroll. is. Uh, this yeah, this is like the longest blog post they've ever put out, so it takes a little while. Uh, that's for mobile. So don't, there's more rebirth stuff, but that's for mobile. So that can be ignored. The new guns, which we talked about. I thought there was something else for rebirth down by the new there guns was ranked. here. Didn't they talk more about that? Uh, I mean, it's ranked play. There's not anything to talk about. It's the same thing. It's, it's the exact same thing that Treyarch has <laughs> put in every blog post since ranked release. And I thought we covered mm. that anyways. We talked about like, we showed the rewards and stuff. Yeah, we did. We talked about it. Interesting. Yeah, we did because we were talking about how like the calling cards and the emblems, and they look basically the same as multiplayer too. Yeah, I guess um, that is it. Then. Yeah, I think that is it. I'm down here by the bundles now. I don't see anything else. Yeah, nothing above where we started either. I don't think so. Yeah. So that's rebirth, buddy. What are your thoughts? I just kind of want to run around and shoot people, so I'm hoping there's just not too much total BS now that makes me annoyed, but I don't know. There is a lot. If you like content, DD, this is the best season for you because there right. are a million different little you. Um, but I don't know. I'm worried there's too much BS going on. We'll see. Because, like, Fortune's key, it, it's hard to explain other than the game just feels cluttered when you play Fortune's Keep pubs. There are like events that happen all the time and it shows up in the middle of my screen. There are sounds that happen all the time when I squad wipe a team and a flare goes off and an icon appears on my UI and another sound goes off that I squad right. wipe somebody. And then the announcer tells me eight different times that a UAV was popped on the map. And then the announcer tells me six other times a counter UAV was popped on the map. And then he tells me another 100 times that a bunker buster was called in. So like, it gets overwhelming and a lot of these things they added kind of just seem like it'll add to that and just make it feel overwhelming and like, dude, I just want to land on Rebirth Island like I used to and shoot people. And I 
am a little worried right. it's going to feel chaotic and weird and stupid. Fluffy. I don't know. Yeah, another just good example of, of that. Just full of total BS we don't need. When we just want to play the game with good, fun mechanics um, and not have to worry about crap like that everywhere. So I don't know. I'm a little worried, to be honest. Yeah, another great example of that, by the way, which I think is still in the game, is those stupid C tokens on Ashika. Why are those I do still not there? Want yeah, yeah. Just get them off the off the map, off the game. Like I never wanted to use them. I still don't want to. It makes looting more annoying. It add, it's yeah, just like adds more clutter and just kind of BS and like it's just more stuff going on that you don't care to engage with. I'm a little worried the key cards are going to be like that because you're guaranteed a key card. It'll be a bad one most of the time, but you're guaranteed a key card for hitting the biometric scanner. And if you get rewards for hitting them repeatedly, everyone, every game is going to be hitting scanners, meaning everyone, every game is going to be dropping a bronze or silver key card. So it's just going to be a bunch of loot pollution right there because I'm not going to want to pick up a silver key card. I'm only yeah. going to want to pick up the good ones. So it's going to be like those C tokens on Ashika. That's going to be kind of annoying. Um, and then there is like other fluffy stuff as well. One silver lining though, is that at least a lot of this goofy stuff or potentially goofy stuff isn't coming till mid season. Yeah. So like on launch, it's going to be solid. I think almost certainly because everything that's definitely going to be good is coming on launch and then things that may or may not be good, or I should say may or may not be bad uh, are coming mid season. So by yeah. then hopefully you're kind of used to all the new stuff we're getting on launch so that when you get all the extra stuff, there's not too much novelty going on at once that overwhelms you. Yeah. They are drip feeding it, which is some silver lining. Yeah, they're dripping but, it to us. Um, I will say overall, I am very excited for this. I think the public infill events are awesome. Super cool idea. And I'm very curious to see how they iterate that on that in future seasons. And maybe Wait, did that, was that one launch other maps or is that in season? That I is the blog post. in season. That oh, is mid season. Okay. So the weather one, I'm also fun. very worried about. Yeah. The weather one, I'm pretty worried about, um, that's actually just bad. That That's either not going to be relevant at all or it's going to be bad. That's one of the few things here that is guaranteed to not be good. Uh, but everything else, like, they didn't change the map nearly that much. That's nearly good. as much as they did Fortune's Keep, which is awesome because it, it's a good map. So it, it's basically guaranteed to be more fun than Fortune's Keep. Even by well, mid-season. Yeah. Actually. They could have blown up all of pri they could have actually like divided the island into two and you had to like take a boat to the other half of the island or something <laughs> like ferry, and it still would have yeah. been better than Fortune's Keep. Yeah, you had to wait, exactly. yeah, wait for the ferry to show up. I would rather do that. Yeah. Yeah. God, Including Keep is a in bad ranked map. play as well. So pretty much no matter what, like ranked got better, will get better with season 3 and Resurgence will be better with season 3 as well cuz there's a fun map that's being added. Um, Maybe they'll make it, a Sheikah sunny. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, <laughs> that would be great, but I doubt it. So, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I'm very excited. I'm excited to play pubs, excited to play ranked. Of all the new stuff we talked about, by the way, I wonder how much of it will be in ranked rebirth and how much of it won't be in ranked rebirth. So, like, for example the heavy armor event where you get four armor plates, we can reliably expect that to not be possible. I would ranked. say, yeah. But like I would, foresight, yeah. like we talked about, I don't know. I, I would even guess of the um, new things they may or may not add to ranked play. That'll be interesting. The infill explosions. I kind of don't think those would be in ranked either, to be honest. I wouldn't. I if, I, if I were a dev, I would say no, because anything that, can randomly change the game from match to match, I don't think should be in ranked at all, and that seems like one of those. There shouldn't be weather changes. There shouldn't be the infill explosions. Um, but, you know. I would like the infill things in ranked, actually. You think? Yeah. But I think the devs will side with what you just said, yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, interesting. So, 
yeah, rebirth. We'll see. Rebirth. So anyway. Um, other than that, X Defiance a joke. I don't know if you want to talk about this. Or I don't. Not. I was going to, but again, this art is already like two hours, so I'm done. Yeah, I, I yeah. guess we'll actually never talk about it. We're never. He, we'll talk about it now. Um, LOL, X Defiant. We told you guys this even when it was being super hyped up. It's been delayed an infinite amount of times, and everyone's mad at the dev team uh, because they've delayed it so much. They haven't communicated enough. And insiders leak that every time they are thinking of doing something, they ask themselves, what would Call of Duty do? So it's just good, like an obvious Call of Duty clone, which we kind of already all knew. Um, and once the game, if it ever launches, does launch, it may or may not be fun for a little while, but it's just COD multiplayer and the video game community has evolved to need more than that. So it's never going to be relevant anyway. And there's no world in which this game kills COD or is even remotely popular. It won't be, it'll be less played than halo. If you want like the multiplayer experience, you play halo these days. That's what you do. X defiance, not even going to be more popular than that. Let alone call of duty L X defiant. Stay humble. Stay humble.